Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. This is Property Management 101, and today's video will be discussing best practices for conducting audits. If you've already done so, please watch my disclosure video as well as my why I do this video. And if you find this video helpful and learn something new, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. In this video, we'll be outlining all the different things to consider when performing audits at your sites. This video will apply to any demographic, regardless of the asset type or demographic type. Here are a few good times I would strongly recommend performing an audit on your property. When you have a refinancing coming up, when the property is under contract to be sold, before or after your busiest season, if there's been a recent staff change, or right after the property has been acquired by the new property management company. And these are just a few examples of times that I would strongly consider performing an additional audit of the property just to consider some of the things that could have been missed from during this time frame. And these are just a few examples of different times I would consider performing an audit at your property. Now under the three areas of three things that I would consider auditing at your property. Number one, keys, access cards, and garage remotes. It'll be really important that you secure these items in a safe area that is well organized that all staff that need to have access have access to. And this includes things like apartment keys, storage area keys, garage remotes, access cards, fobs, and other things that would allow a resident to gain access to a certain area of your property. Again, you really wanna make sure that all of these items are in a controlled, well-managed, lock safe, secure area. You also want to make sure that you have full account for both occupied and vacant units. For units that are vacant or storage areas or garages that are vacant, you want to make sure you have a few extra keys in the event they get leased, then that way you don't have to rush last minute to make extra key copies for that individual that's taking over that area. Just keep in mind as well as you always want to make sure that you have at least one copy, preferably the original of the key, to make a copy and for the staff to have. I personally like to have at least two copies for the management team. And the reason why is this. In the event, you know, the key gets stuck in the door and breaks off, then you're at least able to get that key out and then you still have a good working key. I prefer to have at least two copies and that's just one example of why. The second item to consider when performing an audit at your property is lease and charges. So regardless if your leases are scanned into your property management system or if they're locked in a file cabinet, you always want to cross-reference what the resident has agreed to in writing that they have signed and executed versus what's been entered in your property management system and to ensure things are like dates, things like charges, things like deposit collected, and everything scanned into their account correctly is all matching. You also want to make sure that all the required paperwork is 100% filled out and collected. I know you may be saying, aren't these items supposed to be collected before the resident moves in? You're absolutely right. And in most cases, that should be the practice and is that is the best practice that I would strongly recommend. But in a situation where you may acquire the property and the residents already live in there, there could be some situations that are out of your hands that you still wanna perform an audit just to ensure. And it doesn't hurt to periodically check this as we're all human, things get missed. It is still a good practice to perform even though you may have moved this resident in yourself. This is a great time to perform this right after or right before the busy season. So whatever your busy season is, in a lot of markets, it may be June, July, August, it may be May through September, but whatever that time frame is for your site in your market, I would strongly recommend performing this audit right before, right after, just to ensure that everything that's been collected over that busy time or right before that busy time, everything is entered correctly. And the last thing to consider when performing an audit at your property is make sure you audit your maintenance supplies and equipment. From my experience, this is the most common one that's ignored. You wanna make sure that you are auditing things like all the maintenance supplies, including appliance, plumbing, HVAC, hardware, doors and locks, gas, Freon, cleaning supplies, etc. You also wanna consider things like equipment, like power tools, key machines, dehumidifiers, carpet fans, humidity readers, and so on. I would strongly recommend performing these types of audits at least once a year. And then if you have a special circumstance that comes up, like the property goes under contract for sale, or you have a refinance coming up, 
in other situations that aren't common, I would definitely consider performing an extra audit before and after those periods. One way that I would suggest breaking up your audits at your property is you could break them up in something like this. Maybe during the first quarter, you're ordering your keys, your garage remotes, your storage keys, things like that. This is a good time of year to do it because for most markets, the busy time is between May and September. And by doing this between January and the end of March, you're ensuring that all of you, all the keys that you have for all your vacant units and all of your occupied units are in a good position. So that way you are ready for the busy season. So you're ready for all those move-ins. For another time frame of the year that I would consider adding an audit to your ongoing schedule would be by the end of the second quarter, so roughly around the end of June, I would consider taking a look at your maintenance supplies and equipment. Oftentimes before that third quarter, you know, half the year is already over. You may have dwindled a good amount of your maintenance supplies. You may have, you know, had some equipment you may need to replace or get more of. So this is a good time of year before that second half of that busy season for most markets to perform a maintenance supplies and equipment audit. And then I would strongly recommend at either the end of the third quarter or slightly into the fourth quarter performing a audit on all leases and all charges in your property management software just to ensure that everything is matching correctly. The end of the third quarter for most properties is the end of the busy season. So this will allow you and your team before the end of the year to ensure that all charges in your system are correct and everything that has been collected lease wise is correct as well. I hope you found this video helpful and learned something new. If so, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. And if you have any questions about this video or any of my videos, feel free to comment to this video and I'll be happy to address it for you. Happy leasing.